So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the EGR valve and EGR cooler on a 2008 Freelander 2 TD4 diesel. In the image here, you'll see um, the EGR valve on the left hand side, um, EGR cooler in the middle towards the top. And there's then a gasket that goes between the two um, towards the bottom. And then I bought a, uh, a set of new clamps to uh, lock the exhaust pipe onto the end of the EGR cooler. Um, so uh, hopefully you'll find this useful. Uh, if you do, please like and subscribe. So the first tasks under the uh, bonnet is to remove the engine cover, which there's plenty of videos um, about that, very straightforward. Um, and then we're going to be taking off air filter and the pan's pipe arrangement a bit more access at the back. I'm not sure yet about whether I'm going to take this off or not. Certainly going to take the, um, the scuttle panel off the top because we then need to remove um, the panel behind this um, insulation material at the back of the car to free up enough enough space to access the top of the, uh, the EGR valve. Um, Again, I think Powerful UK have done a video on the removal of the, um, the scuttle panel. Uh, basically, we need to pop off the wipers. Um, just should be a cap to come off there, nut to undo, and then pop those off. And then there's a series of uh, plastic sort of screw retainers um, along the front edge. And then in my case, because I've fitted the driving pod lights, um, I've got to get these um, these little clips off um, because they hold a relay on underneath the scuttle panel related to those lights. So uh, I'll try and set this up on a tripod and, and we'll make a start. So that was relatively straightforward. Um, if you haven't seen behind the scuttle panel like myself, first time I've taken this off. Uh, give you a few views. I've obviously marked where the um, where the wipers were aligned. Hopefully, make my life a bit easier when refitting later. I think I'm next. I'm going to disconnect the battery just to make sure we're not going to have any issues there. Obviously, give all that in there a bit of a clean up later as well. I think before I put the, the panel back on, I think then I'll take the air filter and the uh, and the pan's pipes off next, and hopefully I'll start to be able to see um, what I need to do to take this uh, this rear bulkhead panel off to give a bit more access. So in terms of uh, removal of that pipe, you've got a, a, a Jubilee clip um, to take off um, from the, uh, the sump breather. Uh, and then the two big clamps at either end, uh, use mold grips to get those off with. <clears throat> They're quite heavily sprung, so be careful because they can uh, ping off if you're not careful. Um, and also, also watch for the fact that your pipe work will be full of waste oil from the sump so I'm just going to need to um, to clean that out in a minute before it leaks all over the grass and then I think next we'll we'll have a look at trying to get that uh, rear panel off 
So I think the first thing I'm going to do, because I need to try and find the fixings for that panel, and then um, undo the, uh, the plastic nuts that hold that material, the sort of insulating material on first, because I think there may be some fixings behind. Um, this is in pretty ropey condition. Uh, I suspect that to, uh, to break up a bit as you try and take it off. I think they are still available from Land Rover, so I may end up replacing it at the end of the day. But I'll uh, say I'll take these off and I'll then have a poke around and try and work out what, what holds it on. I think we've got that one there, and I imagine this one here and probably a few more elsewhere. So uh, we'll see how we go, and I'll bring you back once I've done a bit more. So as I suspected to say, this stuff's starting to break up. Um, but actually there's two, see the two fixings in there on this side. Um, at the moment I'm getting in there with a the ratchet spanner. I'm just slightly concerned that on the lower one that if I undo it too far, it will, uh, it will drop down somewhere, I might lose it, but we'll see how we go and bring it back in a minute. Now yeah, the last, well, hopefully the last fixing on this side has proven to be a bit of a bit of a pain it's right down there it's very difficult to get your hand into so I'm thinking what I'm going to do next is try and drop this uh, pipe uh, air intake pipe away just to buy myself a little bit more space on this side and I think that'll probably also help later on with the um, uh, accessing the EGR valve so there's a couple of three pipes on there that need to be uh, unclipped from a uh, bracket that's fixed onto there. There's a, uh, a screw or bolt fixing there and I think I'll then have to get underneath just to have a quick look and work out what else holds that on below. Unless it's uh, having removed that fixing and those pipes I get enough flexibility to, uh, to bring the pipe far forward to give me some more access. I'll uh, bring you back once I've had a play with that. So I faffed around with the um, air intake pipe for a while, uh, unclipped the coolant hose on the power steering pipes, undid the bolt at the top, but then found it was a bit of a faff trying to get the Jubilee clip off the bottom. So gave up on that idea for the moment, um, bit the bullet and pulled the um, insulation panel forward of this pipe. I was trying to avoid doing that, so I was trying to keep the panel as whole as I can, but. I gave up on that idea. That then gave me enough access to get down to the uh, the bottom fixing, which we just see the little hole there, just above the max 6nm pipe. So that's the, hopefully the lowest fixing on this side. And then I've just discovered there's another another fixing under there uh, to remove. And then I'm hoping once I've done that, um, I then need to unclip this pipe that runs along the vacuum pipe that runs along the back of the of the panel there. And then hopefully I can then withdraw withdraw that from the engine bay. So uh, we'll see how we go. Right, so with that last fixing out, it does start to move forward. You have to ease it out because it's there's some sealant along the edge here, this sort of tape stuff that uh, resists for a while. So just gradually try and work that forward. Try not to damage the tape too much. That looks like it might be free now. So I'll drop that vacuum pipe off and see whether I can uh, withdraw it. So that's the panel out. That was the last fixing. Um, and the, the insulation sheet as well. As you can see, it's a bit worse for wear. What I found was that the, um, the, the panel itself came out and left the insulation behind. I think there are some fixings lower down on the on the bulkhead um, potentially below this below this panel um, so I had to uh, get the panel out first and then drag the insulation sheet out afterwards um, and then in terms of actually getting the panel out itself on the right hand side battery side as you look in the uh, in the engine bay um, the panel hooks over those two pipes there where you can see the grommet 
um, and it also hooks in behind that backing pipe. So what you need to do is to uh, pull the, the panel forward slightly on the um, left hand side as you look into the engine bay um, beside the brake servo and then angle it upwards um, uh, and with a bit of faffing you can uh, you can drag it out. Um, I think it could be fun going through and get it back in again because looking at the bottom of the panel I think it sort of hooks over at the bottom there and moving that back in is going to be some fun and games I think um, and as I say the, the insulation is a bit worse for wear so I'm not quite sure yet whether to try and put that back in or to replace it so I'll just give it just a little bit of a wipe down just try and get rid of some of the um, the residue from the fibrous insulation board just try and make sure that doesn't end up where any of the intakes or whatever. Um, still pretty hard to, to see the EGR valve uh, down there. So I'm thinking to make my life easier I'm probably going to um, take the PCV valve off potentially um, although the first stage might be just to just to drop this metal bracket that holds these cables on and see what uh, see what that reveals so let's do that as a as a next step I'll bring you back once I've got that on so with this uh, this bracket that I thought I'd get out of the way um, I've removed these these cables they basically is a combined um, electrical connector there that slots over those two prongs but then in terms of the bracket itself there's then another there's two on the top and then down here there's another if you see that very well where that bracket disappears around the corner there's another uh, 10 mil going directly back into the uh, PCV valve, so I think I'll take that off next with a with a socket, and then we can get that bracket out of the way, just to move a bit more space. Okay, so the uh, the bolt holding that bracket on in the back was actually uh, uh, an eight mil, quite a long one, um, quite tricky to get to, and that's loosened that bracket off. Um, I think what I might then do is unconnect the uh, the two. Uh, sensors here um, just to see whether or not I can drag that uh, that cable a bit further out of the way to give you a bit more space see how we go with that so what I've done now is I've unclipped these two connectors um, the white one is the I believe the camshaft position sensor and the other one goes to the end of the common rail um, and then I've also popped this combined sort of cable out of this bracket here just so I'm hoping I can then get that whole thing up and tucked um, back towards the cabin as best I can. So I've actually decided to take the bracket off entirely, it was just getting in the way. Um, they're relatively straightforward uh, to off there's just a sort of oval connector there I suppose rectangular oval and then uh, got some little teeth on the side you just push those in and then pull it out of the bracket and that's then going to give me much more ability to get that cable tucked out of the way I hope we'll see how we go so with the those cables out of the way in the bracket the offending article is uh, coming into sight I think that's the top of the EGR cooler there that you can see. So I think the next thing I need to try and do is drain some coolant off just so that I don't uh, get the engine bay covered in coolant. Uh, I don't, hopefully you shouldn't have to drop it the level very low because obviously the, the cooler sits quite high up in the engine. So we'll see how we go. So I've decided to try and gain myself a bit of height with a stack of uh, 
timbers at the front of the car just get a bit easier to access and then uh, just sort of give you a general view really of where we are at the moment so so that's the cooler there um, I think that may well be the valve itself on the right hand side So we've got some pipes to disconnect. I'm wondering whether it'd be sensible to take the um, PCV valve off. It might just make my life a whole lot easier. Uh, so yeah, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do that next. So in terms of uh, PCV valve removal, I know Ben French has got a very good video on this. So we need to remove the, the diesel feed pipes, the common rail pipe. Um, we then uh, disconnect uh, the pipe in here with this clip and remove the various bolts that you can see across the top of the PCV valve and that should allow us to drop that out. The reason I'm keen to do that is the the top of the EGR valve tucks in under here that's the top of it there so I'm just thinking that's going to be a real pain to try and maneuver that out with the PCV valve in place so I'm gonna drop that off um, gonna put some cloth across the engine for diesel leakage probably use some old bits of uh, glove just to cover over the ends of the diesel pipes just to make sure they don't get any contamination in there and then later on what I need to do is to uh, is to bleed the system so um, those of you who've done your fuel filter will uh, know how that's done with a with syringe to draw the diesel through so I think we'll crack on with that next and then uh, hoping that will then make my life an awful lot easier. So with the PCV valve removed, the EGR is now fully in sight. So EGR valve, EGR cooler. So 
So we need to um, remove the, uh, the cooling pipes uh, from the cooler, obviously. Uh, and then undo this pipe that runs forward to the throttle body. Uh, may leave it on on the uh, EGR end and remove it on the throttle body end. Uh, and then there's another clamp to remove this end of the cooler, as you can see on the right hand side of the braided pipe work there. And then there should just be four bolts holding the EGR valve on at the back. Um, one of which is here. That's interesting. Looks like there's a bolt missing on that one. Um, no, that's rather interesting. And then the other two will be should be below. Hmm, into those is quite interesting. I think we've got a heat shield to drop away for the exhaust below in order to um, get to the bottom bolts. The concern is one missing there. Not the best. So they've sheared it off. Right, let's uh, start removing, well, coolant first, drop the coolant a bit, and then uh, we'll start trying to take some hoses off. So what I decided to do coolant-wise was to drain a little bit out of the expansion tank with a syringe. It wasn't particularly effective. Then I took this top hose off to the EGR cooler with a strategically positioned uh, Chinese takeaway tub. Um, and then let the, uh, the antifreeze drain into that and then syringe it out of there. I've lost a little bit to the bottom of the car, but not very much at all. So uh, I think that's gonna work okay. The hose just, uh, it's a metal clip that you have to uh, extract uh, sideways off the end of the pipe there that clamps it onto the, or locks it onto the spigot from the EGR cooler. So I'll finish draining that down and then we can move on with some other pipe work. So I'm sure there are probably more efficient ways of draining the, uh, the coolant, but it kind of worked for me. And then what I did was I, I got the, um, the Chinese takeaway tub much further down in the gap here, and then pulled this pipe off and pushed it at, uh, far down as I could get it, in the hope that then uh, uh, it will be draining lower than this, um, this next pipe that we've got to take off. I suspect I'm gonna lose some coolant from there, but we'll see how we go. I'll probably just put some um, some cloth just below that pipe um, to try and catch anything significant. So we'll do that next, see where we go. So in terms of that coolant pipe, you basically pinch the, uh, the two kind of ears together, if you like, on that connector and it locks open. And then it's just a case of, I had to ease a screwdriver in around the flange there just to Try and get the pipe started in terms of it um, sliding off. So that was a bit tricky, but uh, it's moved now. So now the moment of truth, see how much coolant I'm gonna lose when I take that off. So that wasn't too bad. I lost possibly uh, half a Chinese tub full of water there from the other coolant pipe. In total, I'd say we are that like two litres so if you are looking to drain from this high level by just taking the pipes off you need to expect that you'll lose about two litres of coolant by doing that um, just for your information so next stage I might try and get the the heat shield off I think below to allow me access to the other EGR uh, bolts so I think that's going to be the next, the next stage. So you can just see the, the head of the heat shield retaining bolt on the, the left as you look into the engine bay there, bottom of my shot. And there's another one on the, uh, to the right. And I think that's all that holds the heat shield on. So I'm hoping to just drop those away. And I should be able to maneuver that 
out of the way hopefully, although I'm wondering if there might be another bolt down there, you can see just in the bottom of my shot on the left, just beside the rag there, so uh, I'll let you know whether that's uh, part of it or not in a minute. So the first major snag of the day is that one of the heat shield retaining nuts has just sheared off on me. Um, I think there may be another fixing just under here somewhere, so I'm going to take the uh, exhaust gas pipe off next and just put a screwdriver in this clamp and prise it apart as far as I can tell. I'm going to pop that away and get it out of the way and hopefully I can see if there's anything holding the heat shield on under here. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about the sheared off one and the other one's not very happy either but I can't see how to get um, any penetrating fluid into the into the bolt because the heat shield stops you actually accessing it. So uh, a quandary really. I might get away with shearing one off but I think they want to shear any more off. So here we go. Okay, so latest update. Um, I've managed to get this um, heat shield bolt off. It took me an absolute age. I just turned it a little bit to undo, did it up again, undo, did it up again, undo, just moving it a fraction at a time. Must have been at it for about 10 minutes and eventually it came out. There was another one down here on the side, fixed it into this bracket. So I've taken that out, that came out really easily. The next one though is tucked down there behind the uh, the braided pipe so I think I might have to try and possibly take the braided pipe off next. The, the plug connector for the EGR valve is also down there which is getting in the way. Do you see that in the middle of my shot just below the braided pipe. Uh, just got to try and work out how to unclip that and may try and take that off next. Okay, so latest update. Um, I took the the top Allen key out of the uh, Allen bolt out of the uh, exhaust to throttle body pipe, but then I couldn't get to the bottom one. You can't get an Allen key on there because the plug gets in the way. So I've managed to remove the electrical connector plug, which is this blue element here. What you need to do is get a screwdriver in at the top and lift this lift this prong up and then it will slide backwards. It took me an age to try and work that out. So that's out of the way. So I think that will allow me then to um, take out the other Allen bolt for the exhaust pipe. So I think that's the only way I'm going to get to the last bolt for the heat shield. So uh, I'll try and take that pipe off next and bring it back if that's been successful. So in terms of removal of the EGR to throttle body pipe, so as I said before, there's a there's two um, Allen bolts at the back to the EGR body. There's then a retaining bolt midway along the bracket and then two nuts to uh, to remove off the throttle body and then hopefully that should just withdraw. Interesting, I thought there might be a gasket or something on the end, but... Do not. Okay, so, so with the um, throttle body pipe removed, that then clears the way to give us a bit more space down here, and then the the last heat shield. You can't really see it. The, the last heat shield bolt is just where my finger is under here. So I'm hoping I can now get in with a socket from this side. To, uh, to undo that. Well I managed to get the last heat shield bolt out and I've 
just manoeuvre the heat shield far enough away, hopefully, to allow me to get the, um, the bolts uh, undone holding on the EGR cooler. Now, interestingly, they must have had this replaced at some point. So I'm missing a bolt sort of nut at the top, and I also appear to be missing um, a bolt and a nut at the bottom, because I've got one this side, where my hand is, and then, I don't know, maybe I've got both on the bottom. So, right, let's see if we can get a socket into there and uh, get those undone. So yes, I've discovered that I only have one bolt at the top, which is a stud and a nut. And then on the bottom, I've got an Allen bolt, which confused me totally. So goodness knows what they were doing when they, uh, I guess, as I say, they've replaced it in the past. And then I've got one more, one more fixing to uh, to get the cooler off, which is this um, this nut here. And I think that should allow me to withdraw the whole lot. Let's see how that goes. So the last bit on top, so I've taken um, the nut off here and then what I've had to do is to remove the stud from the top here because the bottom one sits over a sort of open-ended horseshoe arrangement but you need to be able to lift it vertically up so you need to take this stud out to get that to come upwards and I'm hoping then it should be all good just to pull it out, we shall see. Just thought I'd give you a quick look at the exhaust heat shield. As this was the trickiest thing to get off actually. It took all the time. So you've got one side fixing at the bottom, so it sits like that. A couple into the uh, exhaust manifold, and it's the one on the right hand side that's unfortunately sheared. And then one in the far end, which again was a right pig to get to. So that's that's probably been the hardest bit so far. So we're now ready to um, uh, strip that apart. So I need to reuse the bolts to fix the new cooler and EGR valve together. And then we're ready to start putting it back together. So I've uh, sent the wife to Halfords to get a couple of M6 Allen bolts for the bottom. Um, so I don't like the idea of leaving uh, things unbolted. Um, and looking at those, and perhaps that's why they put an Allen head in there in the first place, I'm hoping because I've put the exhaust shield back on, I'm actually wondering whether I actually didn't need to take the exhaust shield off in the first place. But we'll find out in a minute when I try and drop the EGR valve back on those couple of bolts. So I'll bring you back at that point. Um, so that's with the heat shield back in. So that's been uh, quite fraught. The uh, Allen uh, head bolts that I got for the bottom were slightly too long. So I've had them in and out a couple of times, had to saw some of their length off. And obviously I've now got an odd arrangement obviously at the top with one Allen head and the original sort of stud and nut, but it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and then the exhaust pipe is kind of hooked over the end. I now need to fix that clamp to it, um, which I think you can just pinch up and it locks in place. Um, I've got the uh, nut put on the end of here. It's the final fixing for the uh, cooler. And then I'll start to reconnect the pipes up. Um, and then we'll bring you back at that point. 
So, uh, I've managed to get the, the various nuts and bolts uh, done up as I said earlier. Um, got the lower hose there connected and then I've got this exhaust pipe connected and I have to say that's an absolute pig to get on that clip. So you've got to try and pinch it together. Um, I've tried pliers, mold grips, eventually got there with the mold grips but it took a hell of a long time and then you've got to try and just about managed to get the little hook just at the bottom of the hole and then I managed to tap down the far side of there to um, to lock it over but that was an absolute nightmare um, so I think we're just about there without need to put um, the other coolant pipe on and probably the exhaust pipe to the or exhaust gas pipe to the throttle body I think next as well start working our way out Okay, so I've got the pipe on from the uh, EGR valve through to the throttle body. Unfortunately, I've misplaced the bolt for that centre fixing at the minute. Usual mechanics nightmare. Hoping it will come to light a bit further down the line. Um, so I'm now going to um, probably put the PCV valve back on. I'm debating whether that's the best way or whether it's better to put the the bulkhead plate back in first. I think the PCV valve, to be honest. Let's see how we go. So that's a uh, PCV valve back on. Uh, camshaft position sensor reattached. I use an Allen key on the uh, on the gap there make sure I put it back on in the right place. Um, need to connect these hoses back up this end again. And then there's a bracket to go on the back to fix the various cables and so forth. So in the next stage, I think. So I have to say I don't enjoy these uh, these clips. They're a real pain to get clipped together, or at least I find them quite difficult. Anyway, so this is the uh, uh, this hose here on the PCV valve and the junction strip there. Uh, reconnected the um, camshaft position sensor. I now need to put some bracketry on the top here to uh, clip these various cables back into so we'll do that next so uh, this is the, the metal bracket that needs to be reconnected um, there's a couple of small bolts into the PCV and then another one down the back here um, which you can't see from here so and then that allows us to clamp those those cables back in place okay so in terms of the uh, metal bracket one thing to bear in mind, the, the long bolt that goes down the back here um, actually doubles up as one of the bolts that holds the EGR on. So that's probably why I thought I'd got a missing bolt at the top. So, um, so that long, long bolt actually uh, secures the EGR as well. So that's that bracket back on. Um, now I can clip the, um, the various cables on and then maybe think about putting the bulkhead on perhaps as the next. No, actually I'll put the um, the common rail back on the thing next. So uh, here we are with the bulk of the engine back together. Uh, the air intake pipe reattached, the rear bulkhead uh, fitted. The only difficult or particularly difficult part of that is there's a there's a double grommet, you can't see it from here, down the back uh, just beside the battery um, and that's quite fiddly. There's like a slot in the uh, 
in the panel to get that through and, and trying to make sure that the thing's lipped in correctly is a bit of a bit of a fiddle factor there. Um, and I obviously need a new uh, heat mat at the back and it's, as I thought it's ended up getting basically destroyed uh, in trying to get it back on. So uh, not the best. So uh, the scuttle panel next I think and then air filter box and I think we're getting there. So that's with the um, the engine largely back together, scuttle panel back on, wipers on. Uh, my last um, task is to, uh, to bleed the um, the diesel intake, uh, which I tend to use a, a syringe, a bit of piping, um, and attach it on the outlet from the um, from the fuel filter, and then just suck through until. Uh, I don't get any air bubbles coming through and then I'll be satisfied that the, the diesel rail etc has um, uh, got no air in it as the intention um, and then we'll see if she starts so uh, mission accomplished she did take quite a bit of effort to get her started I don't think I'd fully bled the uh, air out of the, um, the diesel intake I was beginning to wonder if I hadn't put something back together correctly, but she uh, she got there eventually and I've left her running for a good 15, 20 minutes just to try and see if I can see any obvious leaks or issues, which uh, I don't think so at the moment. So we'll give her a, a test drive out today and see uh, if all is well. So in terms of time i mean i ran out of time last night it's getting a bit dark towards the end i started at half seven and i think we wrapped up about six o'clock um, but i lost a good hour to uh trying to source the bolts that i was missing from halfords and of course doing all the videoing takes up quite a bit of time because you keep doing takes and retakes but it's you know if you're um not done it before i would say you know you need to allow yourself a a day um, but hopefully the video here will uh, help you to avoid some of the pitfalls that uh, that I may have fallen into um, I think the, the big take was I'm, I'm not sure you need to take the exhaust heat shield off um, if you do it yourself have a have a look at that and uh, spend a bit of time uh, just trying to see whether or not that uh, that needs to be done or not um, other than that good luck hope that was a help